Hey, I'm Scotty, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to sketch this musician here step by step in a really loose way using an observational sketching technique. So with observational sketching, we're actually looking at the shapes, the main shapes, and building them from the head down. And so this isn't a perfect sketch where we're getting everything exactly in position. We're sketching really loosely and impressionistically as we go. And I'll be showing you a couple of little tricks to get the proportions right if you need some guidelines. But as usual, the full tutorial will be on my Patreon, where you can also have access to my fundamentals tutorials on sketching people, which is great for beginners. Okay, start here at the top of the page, just slightly to the right, because his head's just slightly off centre. And we're going to draw that shape of that hat, the bucket hat. So follow this rough shape here that I'm showing on the reference. And we're just going down like this. And it's kind of like a rectangle shape there, so don't make it too square. Got that shape there. And then give it a nice loose rim like this. Okay. Now if we get that height, so that distance there, it comes down and then a little bit. So from the side of the hat coming down here, just draw the rough outline there of the beard and it comes in a little bit you can see how far it comes in there just about maybe a fifth but I'm just roughly estimating there okay now we've got the shape of the face there so that's the shape there of the head and we can also draw some of the hair so it comes out the side here this crazy hair it's really nice to sketch and we come down here and you got that on the side there and it comes out just pokes out the side here and comes there so from the shoulders to the bottom of the crotch or the bottom is three heads. But because he's sitting slouched a little bit, we're going to make that about two and a half. I would say about a head width. So that's about the head width there. Come across. And now this point here is in line with the beard. So you should have those two points at an angle. So I'm estimating about that distance there. One, two, and a little bit. And this side's even more squashed because he's bent in like this. So we'll put the dot here. I'd say about two heads. So now we have our four dots like this. So I like to focus on the silhouette and we're coming around like this. So that's the top of the shoulder there. Comes down like this. Don't worry about the guitar yet. The elbow we can see here is about halfway between these two points. So I'm going to put a dot about there. So now we can follow that right like this. Try and follow those nice wobbles in the side of the clothing. And then it comes in. Uh, now let's build this shape out a bit. So we've got the, the corner there of the shirt, and then it comes down, that's the thickness of the arm. Now we can go and do the fold here in the corner where the elbow is. So a few nice one line um, folds like that, and then this bit comes around like this. Make sure you go around the arm like that to give it the volume. And then that's the sleeve. Okay, so now let's move to the other side. So the elbow is about there, the elbow comes across to the other side, it's about similar. So let's come across, coming down from the shoulder, about level with the dot, and then we can give lots of nice clothing wobbles. And from that point there, we have to give it a bit of thickness, see the thickness here? And we come up here again, that thickness here, and now you're drawing a shape, almost like a diamond shape, with the, a little gap for the top for the arm. And then around this point here, we've got lots of wrinkles. So from here, we go past that where the pants are. So we can go down like this. And we can, we can adapt that later if it's not looking right. So now, to, before we do the guitar, we have to do his hand here. Now I'm looking at this distance from the shoulder to the elbow. And then this distance from the, sh the elbow to the wrist. So that's the top of the wrist there. So let's draw that line like that and then in the bottom here make sure it looks like it's coming from that corner and then it comes up and you have that thickness of the wrist there so I'll draw that shape there oh, maybe a little bit too big come in like that and now we have the fingers and I like to do three dots so let's draw one right in the middle and then one either side like that to get the the longest finger is the same length as the back of the hand but we're just going to mostly focus on that outline. So you can you can do things like mark points. So for this finger, it might come out to there, and a similar thing for the second finger. So I'm just looking at that gap. And the third finger would come out as far as this gap. So you come to about there, but it has a slight bend on it. So now outline the fingers, the whole hand is one thing. And so we're going down like this, and it's just little hinting lines 
Okay. Um, and the other one here. Okay. So from the dots, it just depends how big you've done this really, how easy it is to do. So now we're coming up here and this hand here. So we've got a similar thing where we draw the back of the hand. So it's pretty much straight up. So if it's straight up, I might make it a bit more like that. And then let's just outline that shape. So the thickness and it comes down around that corner of the hand and then down. Okay, and then we have the three dots there for the fingers. Okay, so let's outline that hand like that. And then it goes like this. And then the other finger. So I'm just roughly getting that shape. And then the, the little finger here has a little gap. So I'm going to make that set, that main shape outline. And now we can add the split between the fingers. And you don't even have to exactly follow. You can just show a little hint like this. Down like that. Another one up here. Okay, so with the guitar we add, let's add this first, this top. So draw a line there. And then down here, let's draw a line, where is it, about there. So now we have two points where we can join up. So let's draw a straight line now, looking at this point where you can practice. And then up, kind of missed that, but that's alright. And now we can draw the head. Where does the head bit go? To about there. Go like this, this, and then we draw those two a little flower there, so don't forget the flower detail. Now we're coming down to do the guitar here. So it comes from about the wrist there, because he sits, his hand bends there, and it comes up, and where does this top pick? So I'd say it comes to there. Okay, and then let's draw that shape. And then I'll mirror it, so make sure you get that same width here. So that distance from there to there, and there to there. That's where the dots come in handy. And just add a little bit of a measurement. So that should be the same on either side. Uh, so now to get the bottom of the guitar, let's go from the top here, for there, so look at that distance, and let's double that down, approximately, and then a little bit more. So that's the bottom of the guitar. So let's come around this side, and make a nice curve here, okay. Try and match whatever curve you've had, there will be a, the knee here, and then come up around this way. And then we've got to draw that circle in here, so the little hole. And then halfway between that point and there, we draw a little thing here. Is it called a bridge? Now we have to get onto the feet now, the legs. So we said that from the shoulder to the bottom is about two heads here, approximately two and a half. And so that is where his leg is sitting. So that means we have to draw the thigh here, coming up. So just so you can see here, there's a bit of clothing in there, the top of his leg. And then it comes in, that. so that is the knee. And we have to have these folds make sure they're aiming towards the tension point. So the knee here is the tension point and all these little uh, wrinkles would be aiming towards it. And we want to find approximately where the bottom here of his pants are. So usually when it's straight down, if we're looking straight straight onto it, it would be about one and a half heads. So that'd be one and a half. So let's go and draw these nice wrinkles. I like this shape of the jeans here. And remember what I said about the wrinkles, they're aiming up like that. So here we've got the other, the pants. So I'm looking at that negative space between the, the shirt and the pants. And I think that the leg will come out about there. And you have to compare it to other things. There you go. So the, the knee comes out about here. And we want to see the knee. Okay. So we've got our knee. And I can see his leg, if I compare it to the edge of the image, it's coming pretty much straight down maybe slightly to the right if you want to exaggerate that and so we have one and a half and let's see I'm comparing that to that angle that looks about right one and a half to the top of the angles and the, the jeans come down a little bit further so let's go and draw a nice wobbly line like this and that. just comparing it looks right whitish and then towards that point again and make sure you've got that thickness right of the leg. And I'm comparing there. Does it give enough space there? That looks. So the next thing is the chair. So we go across just a little bit, maybe halfway between the pants, the two legs, right in the middle of the guitar there. We come down like that. And that'll be nice because then we can see the leg uh, really between the legs. And then we have the shoe here. So we'll stop about there. Bottom of the chair goes about there. And make sure it comes out the other side like this and then goes up. And that's where his bottom sitting, so that pillow will come around like that. And that's his clothes here. Now we're going to draw the shoes next. 
So with shoes, we focus mostly on the silhouette of the shoe. So it comes out this way. I think that's okay. And then we always draw this big shape on the front and it comes back. And then just before the heel, it kinks back in a little bit like that. And then we've got the heel comes up. And then we've got that front section where the shoelace is and it comes around. And we can use some of these lines to describe the form like this. We can even draw a line across the front of the shoe like that. And then this line here. And now this, this shoe comes out to about, so just having a guess, and shape that shape. So it's a big oval on the front for that shape. See that oval there? But then it comes in, it kinks in just before the heel goes around the heel. Got to get that piece of leather there between the shoelaces. And then let's join the shoelaces up. And then even though the shoe doesn't have it, I've added this top piece of leather. And that will help describe that form. So coming down, I'm looking at this side. Uh, making sure that it matches. Goes up here and there's, where's the other one? There's another one here, so just on the inside of the shoe. Coming this way. And this comes down a little bit further than this one. And up a little bit on thicknesses. And where does it touch his shoe? So about there. Sit, he's got his shoe on that. And comes around, all the way around. And then we can draw another leg at the back. It comes down like this. But we've got to do these details down here. Okay, so while we're down here, we'll do that. So the bottle goes from about here. What we can do is just, this is a fun rough shape, so we don't need to be, got the label there, and then some grips. And then on this side, got his cup of tea. So we draw, just outline these shapes. Comes towards us, so it's a bit of an angle, rough, whatever that is. And then these shapes here, we've got that, the two legs coming down, so they angle in slightly. It's that bar there. I'm focusing on trying to make these lines loose. That's why it's all one line sections. Okay. Easier to make things looser when you've got one line sections. Okay, and then this magical hat is storing all his money in there. Okay. It can be a little bit closer, I think, just to fit it on the page. And we're drawing this angled oval. You can see that this front is a little bit longer here than this section. So put a dot there, and then a dot here, and a dot here. So it's a mini oval, quite wide here. But this is a little bit wider than this side. And then you link them up. Okay, just like that. And if you like, you can add a little thinner layer. On this side, it's thicker. Like that, that's just the same. And then we come down from that point, come down here, and that point, come down here. And then we've got the hat band there as well. Okay. That's so cool, those little details. Uh, now, if you want to draw some of the background, you can. Feel free to do that. You can draw little cobblestones but I'll, I'll kind of uh, put the detail behind here you can make them up you don't have to follow it exactly and we're going up towards there just on the inside of that thing just make them light and nice they can have a little bit of a wobble and then we go like this uh, now let's just do this last little section at the top so it starts off round and then it goes straightish and then it goes round again and a line across there put the detail there uh, now we'll, let's just do this neck section. So come down from the beard where that little bit off from the from the hair and we've got a bit of skin here. You can exaggerate, add a bit more skin if you like because that'll be a nice color detail later. And come down from the shirt there and then another section of that shirt here. It comes up and he's got this collar on this side. You can also exaggerate these, these collars as well because they look nice even though there's none on that side. Okay, now we've come to the face. So the face we usually break up into three sections. Now this is a very tricky face because it's got a hat on and a huge beard. So how are we going to do that? Well a lot of it is just by observation and guessing but what I'm going to do is I already put a mark there for the top where I thought his head was and I put a, another mark there from where, the, where I thought the chin was because the, the beard will go below the chin. So then I actually have a face length and I'm guessing just behind this up here behind the the rim of the hat is his eyebrows. So you can imagine the eyebrows are there somewhere. And then between those points, that's where the bottom of the nose is. So we can put two dots there for the bottom of the nose. And then with the nose, we draw the side of the nose first just to get that width. So let's draw the side of the nose here. Just two, draw two lines like this. And then the nostrils, we don't draw circles. We just draw little lines at this scale. We're just drawing a shadow bit. I come down a little bit. Okay, so we've got a very impressionistic nose there. Okay, so we've got the eyebrows and the nose and the chin. Now that we have those, those sections, the forehead is up here. Let's draw the eyes. 
So we'll go up between the brow and the nose, we'll go, or with this scale, maybe just go halfway and then up a little bit, and draw two dots at that level, the same width as the nose. So they're the corners of the eyes. And then each eye should be that same width across. So get that width, same width. Okay, now we have positions for where the eyeballs go. What we do is we, we just go up, put a little line diagonally going up, and on this side a little line going diagonally up. Like it's got quite a nice round eye there like that. Okay, then we want to connect those two lines, and we can see just a little bit of a round line there between the two. So just curve it down, just ever so slightly, not as much as the top one. It's like a little U shape. We can just do a little dot right in the middle and then expand it. So a little line like that and a little line on this. Let's draw a little line like this, just a subtle little line down and then a subtle little line down like this and on this side too. So one on either side like that. And then from the side of the nose that's come down like this, we can draw some hairs going up like this. And the corners of the mouth are slightly wider than the nose, sort of a dark hairy mouth line. You can add some more hairs to describe this. You can add just a few little details here like this. Okay, there's all the line work. Okay, now we're going to get onto the watercolour. So with the watercolour, I have my round 10 brush, some water, a paper towel, and my Winsor Newton watercolours here. I'm not going to follow the reference exactly. I feel like it needs a little bit more contrast between the top shirt and the pants. So I'm going to do that bright blue shirt, and then I'm going to do a more of a navy pants there with the shoes. But let's start with the hat here. So I have cadmium red and so you bring it across like this, sort of blob it on. So let's do the shirt. So I have ultramarine, so it comes across and then as it comes down, we'll make sure it's really got a lot of ultramarine in there. So a lot of ultramarine on this side and that will start at the top here. And then when we do the legs here, we'll leave in a bit of ultramarine in there and then we've got Payne's Grey. And we'll start quite light at the top here like this. So quite light. You can see there's a lot of light there. We'll increase that saturation. Now with the ground, on this side I have some Payne's Grey mixed with a warmer colour. So grab a warmer colour. I'm using Burnt Umber. So I'm just, I'm just doing sections that are not touching each other. Now I'm going to do the guitar. So <clears throat> I'll start the guitar with yellow. And now we start at the top here. So starting with that yellow ochre at the top, avoid the flower if you can, and then we're coming down, burnt sienna, coming down, leave a gap around that bridge. So I'm trying to show the light. We can go down to this hat, so that's another red. The yellow ochre, paints grey in it, just to give it a bit of a dull colour. See how dull that is? It's a dull yellowy colour. Okay, and then the shoes, paints grey, block them in. You can add, see little gaps there if you like, around that side. Let's also make this. Okay, so we're blocking in all the colours, leaving little white bits, making it very loose. So now this is dry, we can go back and do this layer. We've got burnt umber, blacky brown. So the hat should be dry now. So let's just make that all the same colour. If you have, if you haven't blocked those eyes in, if you've kept um, circular, you can try a little bit of that brown in there. Okay, now it's time to do the skin tone, burnt sienna, and make it very light on the skin. And they're coming in like this. So it should be lighter than the guitar. Now under the neck here. And I'm going to grab cadmium yellow and just do the pillow. I think it could look nice with yellow. Payne's grey, so a darker colour. We're going to do that band on top of the hat. So let's do that now that that's dried. Okay, so we're going to do some shadows now. Ultramarine with some rose. We want the shadow that goes right across his eyes. So it goes down around his nose. So there's a little bit on the side here. It's a big shadow here. On the back of his hand there would be a shadow. So it would be shadow underneath his arm here. Um, on the chair. Um, then behind the guitar here on his leg there will be a shadow because if the sun's coming this way. And a little shadow underneath this. So you got a bit more ultramarine in there. And let's add some splatters. So what I'm going to do is grab my secret weapon which is the toothbrush. Strong saturated burnt sienna. And let's see if we can flick some this way. Now we've got our Posca pen, so you have to give that a good shake to make it opaque. So PCM1, and I'm going to focus mostly on that beard. Let's see if we can get some grey hairs happening. So scraping the side of my pen, making a very light little scrape. Might have to go over it again with um, some more little highlights on the hat. Some of the strings following them exactly. Hat on this side, 
Let's see if I can make that beard not so stand out so much. Go over it with the color. And that's how I sketch a figure in a really loose way using observational sketching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something from it. Let me know in the comment what your favorite tip was on how to sketch this figure. And of course, if you want the full tutorial with the template and the reference, you can check out my Patreon. I've also got all the fundamental tutorials on how to sketch people there. Um, and we've got a great warm community where we share our sketches. So if that interests you, please uh, consider checking that out. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.